All right, good evening and welcome to the show on Midwest, MidwestSports.net. I'm Joey McWilliams. I'm joined tonight by Josh Haley. As we are here, you can tell right now, we are at the Heartland Conference Baseball Tournament. Now, this is taking place at the depot at Cleburne Station in Cleburne, Texas, and we are just being treated to a fantastic baseball tournament. Day two of the three days in the books right now. In our footprint of MidwestSports.net, one of the teams we covered, Arkansas, Fort Smith, and the Fort Smith Lions unfortunately fell. They, they lost on Thursday against top seed St. Ed, Edwards 6-2 and then fell today against St. Mary's 7-4. Josh, some players with some, some good ball out there, but it just couldn't quite get it done. This is a very, very tight conference. As a matter of fact, seeds one through four in the tournament all separated by one game at the end of the regular season. Yeah, and I think you probably could have played this regular season over again and maybe seen a whole different seeding, a whole new regular season champion. It really was that close throughout the regular season. And Arkansas Fort Smith had a great year. You know, they were two and done in this conference tournament, but they had a great season. Todd Holland has done a great job with that program, got them to a regional final last year. They had high hopes, you know, coming down the stretch this year, but an unfortunate injury really plagued them towards the end. Yes, without the services of Logan Allen, who – is on pace right now to just obliterate all of the Fort Smith uh, offensive records, the batting records, and he's just a sophomore, so hopefully he can come back and get through the wrist injury and be available for next season for Arkansas Fort Smith. In the meantime, in the tournament, Anthony Seminaris with uh, four hits over two days, Deion Williams three for seven outing, and they just ran into some tough teams. Again, uh, when you have a loss to St. Edwards, who has now won 12 consecutive Heartland Conference tournament baseball games, 12 in a row, five consecutive tournament championships. So that's just a tough draw in the first round anyway. Well, it always is. Rob Penders, the, the longtime head coach at St. Edwards, he's always got his team ready to play. You knew they were going to be tough coming in, and they were without a doubt the hottest team coming down the stretch. So you knew that they carried the most momentum into this tournament. So far it showed with a 2-0 and spurt. And having won now 15 of 17 games from the regular season and on into the postseason. They are the number five team, by the way, St. Edwards, in the South Central Regional rankings. You have to think with two wins already that they will remain in the rankings and be in the postseason. I would certainly think so. I don't know how they could be kept out unless just some mayhem occurred on, on the final day of conference tournaments. But, you know, it's not just about this season. It's, it's the body of work you look at from past seasons as well. And you'd like to say it's only this season that factors in and, we're not inside the selection committee room, or at least I'm not, so I don't know. But St. Edwards is a team that has performed in the postseason year after year after year. Six straight postseason appearances in the NCAA tournament. Have to believe that this is number seven, regardless of what happens on championship Saturday. And so tomorrow from here in Cleburne, Texas, it's going to be St. Edwards taking on Lubbock Christian. And if Lubbock Christian wins, then the if necessary game becomes necessary. And so that will be a double header here from the depot. Now, to wrap things up from a baseball perspective, there was a little bit of mayhem. It wasn't from the Heartland Conference. It seemed to be okay, although St. Edwards did have a 21-10 victory today over Lubbock Christian. From the Lone Star Conference, since we're in Texas, we'll talk Texas sports for just a moment. The Lone Star Conference, that tournament apparently turned into a football game, and it looked like that Kingsville missed an extra point at the end. Tarleton State 21-20. Victors today in the Lone Star Conference semifinals. So you see a score like that come across your computer. What do you think? Uh, the first thing you think is how emotional it's going to be for the team that has to lose that game. If you put up 20 runs in a baseball game, you expect to win. And the statistical odds would say you're going to win. So for somebody to have to lose that game, I can't imagine the emotions they are going through. But that's the craziness of postseason baseball and softball, for that matter. You know, we talk so much about March Madness and basketball, rightfully so. Things get crazy in May in, in college baseball and softball, though. All right, I'm speaking now with Josh Haley. Now, Josh, his regular gig, well, of late it's been to work with me, and I've had a, a good time broadcasting with Josh uh, here in the Heartland, also with the Great American Conference softball. But his regular gig is with Roger State. Now, Roger State has – has still some activity going on. I realize the softball team season came to a conclusion uh, just within the last day or so, but talk about the run that the Hillcats did in softball. Well, I was very privileged just to be able to see it and be a part of it uh, throughout the season, but 
head coach Andrea Vaughn and, and her staff, Carrie Hallman and Mallory Moss, did a fantastic job. They were picked dead last in the Heartland Conference in the preseason poll, seventh out of seven teams. Uh, they finished up winning the Heartland Conference Tournament, didn't need the if-necessary game, went to the Heartland Conference Tournament at the host site at, down in San Antonio against a very good uh, a field there in that tournament. I think, as we've talked about how close the baseball field is, the softball field was the same. W they went into the final weekend of the regular season. Any of the five teams could have come out as the top seed and the host of that conference tournament. Uh, but it was Roger State who came out and won four games in a row, did not need the if necessary game, and picked up not only the tournament title, but their first ever berth in the NCAA tournament, went to Colorado Mesa in a regional. And so uh, for a lot of teams in this area who have made the move to NCAA Division II, it's very rare to see some of these teams have that much success that early on in the transitional phase and in their early years of D2. And we've seen this, of course, within the state of Oklahoma, We've seen this transition uh, with a number of schools, Roger State, one of them, Oklahoma Christian, uh, both schools in the Heartland Conference, Oklahoma Baptist, the most recent one. That wasn't in that, that initial migration, but then uh, we also saw Southern Nazarene, Northwestern Oklahoma, and then even in the Heartland Conference down here, Lubbock Christian, and Lubbock Christian making some noise and has made some noise on the baseball field. They certainly have, and that's a team that won a national championship at the NAIA level in 2011. They were competing for a national title year after year after year, and their first season playing in the Heartland Conference 2014, they were postseason eligible, but they went 26-4 and in the regular season, won the regular season outright in the Heartland, and Lubbock Christian Baseball is certainly one of those teams that even despite uh, some tough goings and it being difficult to recruit when you make the move to D2 and say, hey, we can't play in any postseason for two years, that's a tough way to recruit. But Nathan Blackwood has done a tremendous job, the 15th year head coach. They knew they were going to come in to D2 immediately and, and start competing for championships. All right, let's talk a little bit more about Roger State then because there is still some, well, there's sports going on right now. We talk about uh, possibilities to be competing at the NCAA championship and tournament level. Yeah, certainly, uh, and some of the sports still going on, as you mentioned, with uh, track still having the, the national championship stages, uh, but they won conference championship in golf. Uh, they had an All-American uh, already a couple of times in Baylor Harvey in cross country and uh, in track. So track still coming up for the outdoor championships. Uh, both golf teams uh, had representation at the regionals, so in the postseason of the NCAA tournament, if you will. And also, you saw in the NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championships uh, an All-American from Rogers State there, too. So not just softball, but having uh, success early on in a lot of those sports. All right, Josh, we had fun working. We get one more day together before our, at least part of the broadcast, winds down. I realize it's the middle of May right now, so Mother's Day is getting close. Don't forget about Mother's Day. And uh, we have five children in my household. How many children do you all have? Three. So you, we can't forget Mother's Day. No, no, no. It's been coming up for a while. You could argue it's uh, one of the biggest holidays of the year. No way we could forget. All right, so don't forget about Mother's Day. And uh, so I want to wish Happy Mother's Day to Jody, and I'll be back home, I believe, by Mother's Day. I don't think there are enough if-necessary games to go on over the course of tomorrow. But we'll be here in Cleveland for one more day. And one more thing. I, I do want to give a shout-out. I mentioned this at the beginning. The depot at Cleburne Station home of the Cleburne Railroaders and soon to be home of one Rafael Palmero. as a matter of fact. He signed, 53 years old, signed to play with this team. And we're calling games from this ballpark. This is a fantastic place to watch a game. Fantastic place to watch a game. Obviously a stadium that's barely a year old. Uh, and one of the things that makes it great is the people here. They've been so hospitable to us, so great to us and welcoming to the conference to be able to have this tournament here. You could not ask for a better setting. Uh, a better group of people, and of course the Heartland Conference always does a great job uh, from an operation standpoint, the players, the coaches, the fans, everything going into making this a great atmosphere and a great tournament so far. All right, well I've enjoyed it. We have one more day here, but we're going to sign off tonight. The show on MidwestSports.net uh, will continue, so please be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com, and search MidwestSportsNet. So for Josh Haley tonight, I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks for watching this.